Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts paying attention to you here on the edge welcome to on the edge the place where the conversation is pointed the guests are sharp and the responses are never done and today we have aileen boyle all the way from scotland my daughter loves scotland she says she wants a redhead and a highland cow <laughs> <laughs> that's on her life list so we're planning to travel to, to uh, scotland and i was just talking to aileen and she was telling me that it's kind of uh, cloudy and it's rainy, but when it's not, it's green and it's lush. There's a great sense of community and culture and history and music and dance and all that great stuff. But what we're going to talk about is Venture Catalyst. How is she catapulting people into the next level of success and a whole lot more? Let's welcome her to the edge. How are you, Aileen? I'm really good. What a lovely, lovely introduction. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad to have you. Uh, have you ever been to the States? I have. I went to New York about uh, 12 years ago. A friend of mine from Scotland, her husband got a transfer for jobs. So I went, I left my babies at home and I went all by myself and uh it was amazing <laughs> yeah i was gonna say did you get the as we say turned up <laughs> oh yeah so uh her kids were at school mine were here her husband was uh at work so we went into the city because she was out in westchester county we went into the city and we just we had a great time it was that's so good that's the city that never sleeps never sleeps i loved it do you know what i never once felt unsafe I never once felt threatened I never you know and and big cities can feel like that sometimes particularly cities you don't know um but no I just I, I felt I, that uh I felt pretty relaxed until I had to go into the subway at night mm, and it was mm. like it was like 2 a.m but you I mean you're underground you don't know that and it was a little you know it was a little it was a little different I just yeah. had, had to have my guard on but that's anywhere you go. Yes, it is. In Scotland, you know, we're plagued with gun violence. Are you able to have a, your own personal weapon there in Scotland? No. Well, you can. I think, you know, if you're a police officer, there's certain uh, rules that allow it. They have a firearm. But we, the, the, the gun, the gun thing is just not, a, it's not a thing here. You know, it's, nope. <laughs> No, we don't have we don't have store. You know, it's a specialist thing. You're either shooting or hunting, um, and it's it's a it's a sport. It's seen as a sport. You can go to a shooting range. You can do clay pigeon shooting, um, all of those good things. But you, you, you know, just shooting. Oh, they do a lot of that. The British and Scott, you know, they do that spinning of the dip, the dish, and then they shoot. That's a, yeah. But here, you know, they're shooting people for sport. And don't be a yeah. Don't be a little brown rabbit. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. So let's talk about how you got to where you are. Tell us how you show up in the world. So, so the venture catalyst thing, let's start there. Otherwise I could start like, you know, David Coffer prevailed. I was born <laughs> and we'd be here for a long time. Um, so yeah, that came from, uh, when I started this business, I've had a couple of businesses and, um, and I've been employed. Um, I actually started life as a secondary teacher, a high school teacher of business studies and economics. Oh, wow. And that took me to um, to work abroad. And it was the best thing I did. So I was 22. I was halfway around the world um, standing on my own two feet. And that was quite the baptism of fire, I have to say. But I met some fantastic people and I learned what resilience was and how resilient I was and um, it was amazing. Um, so that was really about, but but that was definitely um, being a catalyst for young minds. Um, so when I came back to the UK, I then moved into working in the tech space and I helped put computer systems into 
businesses. And that was a catalyst for them moving forward. And then all the roles I realized were was about me coming in and somehow digging deep into what people are looking for, really pulling out what their dreams and aspirations were and showing them how they could get it. So I just, when it came to this business, and this one was really about supporting businesses in this ever-changing life that we are in now, you know, things can change on a weekly basis. Um, I just thought, you know, I think I started off just being, hi, I'm Aileen and I run this company. And then eventually I was like, you know what? It's ven- I am a venture catalyst. I catalyze other people to achieve their vision, their dream. It was always mine to make a difference. It was always mine to create something meaningful, impactful, create a legacy. And this title allows me to do that. So that's where it came from. Well, you got a lot of experience and that's a lot of heavy lifting. You know, people think that it's the actual job. It's not the job. It's getting the mm-hmm. person behind the job to believe in yeah. themselves, to think that they're unstoppable, Yeah. to create positive thoughts, but also accept the challenges because it's not that easy. You know, yeah. like you say, you're a catalyst, but somebody could, you know, jump right off the edge of the cliff. They don't do the homework. They don't hire where they're weak. They don't follow through. They don't keep good records. They don't pay their taxes and on and on and on. Yeah. They run up against opposition or it's a very competitive world right now. Everybody wants to be a coach or an entrepreneur, but Mm -hmm. just to be a regular old employee can be very satisfying as well. It can. It comes down to the organization you work for. And let's face it, the, the owners and the management team there they're they're like entrepreneurs you know it maybe that is their business so you can join any organization and it be the best and worst experience of your life you know I for me what I've noticed is that it's a real roller coaster have you seen the picture where it's like what they think success is and it's a straight line and then beside it there's what they think success actually is and it's it looks like a two-year-old's been scrolling on a bit of paper because it's just it isn't straightforward because business is about people. So you're actually dealing with people and people are imperfect. People are flawed. Um, and we all bring our own stuff. <laughs> and it's you the know? expectation. You have to, me, I set high standards. I've had yeah. this podcast almost 21 years now. I'm one of the wow. pioneers. I'm one of the pioneers. I'm one of the first people that ever put, you know, yeah. this platform out. But I had a vision for myself that I wanted boss. I did not want to be an employee. I wanted to be able to leverage. I wanted to be able to promote. I wanted to be able to market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wanted Mm -hmm. to be able to look back over my 1980 interviews and find 1900 wins. Everybody's not going to be happy. Don't get, don't get me wrong. I don't don't try to, to do that. But for the most part, 1900 people have really found success. What does success mean to them? Some just want yeah. another story. Others want to promote their business. Others want to promote their book. Yeah. It's, it's finding what you want. And so you got to do the deep dive. So do you do yeah. a lot of coaching around, you know, mindset as well as also the business? Sure. I, I never say I'm a mindset coach specialist, but um, if you want whatever whatever success is for you, you have to it has to be in here first you have to have seen yourself achieve it Mm -hmm. you know you have to you know so I have a personal mantra that I say um I mean I I followed the um I've done the Proctor Gallagher thinking into results program I don't know if you know about Bob Proctor yeah and that's really powerful and that is pure mindset so I have a mantra of like every day I say I'm so happy and grateful now that and it's the thing that I'm looking to achieve and then I imagine what it looks like. And I know exactly, you know, what does my life look like like that? What am I doing with my kids? What does my business look like? What sort of um, clients am I working with? And that all comes from in here. I'm a heart driven entrepreneur, but I have to have seen myself because it's about self-image. So self-image is huge, huge, huge part of what is important. Yeah, yeah it is. It just, and and I say business starts in your head. I, and that's not to, and this comes from a heartfelt person, you know, right. um, 
And I know that, you know, because there are moments of doubts, there are moments of setbacks and you've really got to challenge your own resolve. And one of the, the biggest strengths you can do is to either change direction or go, do you know what? This isn't working. I'm going to do something else. That's a huge strength. And you can have that impact, whether you have your own business or, as you said, working for somebody, because it comes down to the people that are making the decisions. Have they allowed you to flourish? How can you yeah. allow your people to flourish? So it's about the people for me. And, and then it's performance enough. and then it's profit. If you're not if you're in an organization that really probably doesn't see your value, you see the value in them. There's still contacts. There's still resources. There's yeah. still information that you yeah. might be able to leave that company mm -hmm. go somewhere mm -hmm. else mimic it and make yeah. it better you don't have yeah. to invent the wheel brains you just have to figure out how to make it roll a little bit better that's it that's it i started this business in january 2020 which you know then we had the you know one of the worst years ever 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 but i tell you something i think what i what i noticed then was just how adaptability and kindness were a real core strength right. of entrepreneurs right. at that time um, because rapid change was the new normal, you know, and and so that adaptability and being able to see that change is, is just constant now. But also for me, those are my two core strengths and kindness is where I come from on everything. Don't get me wrong, I'm very, very ambitious businesswoman, but it's, it's presented with kindness, it's presented in collaboration, it's presented with a sense of community. And, and those things are really, really key, really crucial for long-term success. So, you know, because collaboration often leads to like innovative, innovative solutions, partnerships, you know, look at us, we had, a, we had a conversation and now we're doing this, you know? You never know what's gonna come out of a conversation. So to go in it with kindness, for me is actually a cornerstone of modern entrepreneurship. Well, you know, well, if, you know, if we civil to one another as human beings, yeah. because everybody has become so combative, and it's yes. hard to believe that it's been three years since the pandemic just was really in full effect, and how yeah. it, how it impacted the entire world outside of mm -hmm. kindness, and your business. What key values did you you learn or you observed? You know, in that moment of silence. So it was really, it was, a, it was about how people were prepared to step up and lean in. Um, those were the people whose businesses survived. Those were the people who got through that particular difficult period. Um, there was a real, I, I mentioned it, there's a real sense of community um, and a real, ability to um build strong networks with experts with mentors so that they could provide and receive invaluable support and opportunity so that when the time was right when things were opening up when you could take a step forward then the access to the the new way of doing business you know commerce 4.0 or whatever you want to call it was there and so people could move into that new way of being um those who became quite insular and quite i must get on with my business tended not to survive business wise because i understand that feel the need for survival but actually in that case i mean i was getting in front of chief execs that would never have taken my call before so everybody was reaching out. And if you were there, then there was a real opportunity to support each other. So it was a support, supporting and business opportunities and an opportunity to just turn your business on a 180 and do something new. Because mine soared, but everybody wanted yeah. to be heard. Yes. You had an audience at that time. So yeah. That was very, very important. But now we've leveled out on that. We're into chat, uh, chat GT. Yeah. Artificial intelligence. What are you thinking about that? Because that is going to change the landscape. So it many is. people, the first thing people put in front of you is fear. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's to fear, but fear itself. Learn how to use it, how to work it, yep. how to incorporate it in your life because it's here. Yeah. Just because you mm -hmm. don't like it doesn't mean it's going away. That's what the whole yeah. lot of things brings. Newsflash. Um, yeah. 
really helping people use that tool to help them with their business plan, help them with their strategic yeah. plan. Ask the questions that you wouldn't have asked when you're looking to hire someone. Project yeah. forecast where you're going to be. Uh, you know, collect a lot of data. It's very, very useful. And it's right at your it fingertips. Is. It is. Do you know where I've seen it work really well is um, when you have entrepreneurs are fantastic at ideas. They're not necessarily fantastic at rolling things out or working to a process. So I've seen them when they're maybe struggling to articulate something, putting in, I give me a sentence that describes this, this and this. And it's a, it's a bit like Grammarly on steroids. <laughs> and oh, it comes up with the most beautiful sentence. And then you can take that and go, well, I wouldn't quite say it like that. And then you can alienify it or Aprilify it. Right. And I've right. I've seen business leaders use it. I've used it like that if I've been struggling to find the right words for something. Um, the thing to know about this is it is a tool like anything else. And when tools are used poorly, you're not gonna get good results. You know, so you've got to know how to use it. I think um, you and I know how to use these tools to our advantage and how we can help oh, other people I, use it to our advantage. I can't take, I can't attest to that. I am going to have my business mentor. Uh, well, I'm sorry, my ego coach mentor on the show. I want you to tune in and listen to that. She yeah. is with AI on steroids. She has a group on a LinkedIn called the weird ones. And I listen to the, their minds are so different from ours. Mm -hmm. They're very analytical. They mm -hmm. are very creative. They're very out of the box. They are risk takers. And those mm -hmm. are a lot of things that people need to incorporate in their business. Like you said, it's great to have an idea, but implementation, Yeah, you know, stepping mm -hmm. back and saying, oh, well, maybe this didn't work. Let me try this for six months. Let's try Let's try, let's try, let's try let's something. Try something. Uh, you know, innovative and fun and creative because you want to enjoy what you do. So many yeah. people, oh, well, I want to be an entrepreneur for the freedom. There's no freedom. <laughs> do you know what I, mean? <laughs> I have to be extra disciplined. I have to be extra strict yeah. on myself. I've got to get up. I've got to take a shower and sit and, and put on, you know, nice clothes and smile and have a meeting on Zoom as if we were meeting in a restaurant or meeting in yeah. some office. Yeah. You know, and it's even harder because again, you can't feel that 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 connection, connection. that one-on-one -on -one right in the room with the individual. You've got to sell yourself through a computer screen and close the deal. Yeah. Do you find there in Scotland that women are very ambitious as far as being entrepreneurs uh, and really trying to step out on a global platform? You know, there has been a real surge in women entrepreneurs in the last four years. Um, it has, there's a lot of women, particularly, and I'm going to put my age, <laughs> and I'm going to be out there. I have a five at the start of my age and younger who have decided that they want to do things differently, that they have these ideas, that they, they have something that, you know, they've seen a problem in the market. They've seen a problem that people have, and they go, do you know what? I have a solution for that. And I want to bring it to market. And so, you know, there is a real surgeon. So I spend a lot of my time helping create the opportunities, supporting women, making sure they get the finance, get the business support, get the mentoring. Women love mentor need mentoring. They love mentoring. Okay. They they love that sense of community. They, they need better access to finance, though. A couple of statistics, I was appalled. Only 6% of venture capitalists, see there's a venture capitalist, venture capitalist money in the UK goes to women-led businesses. 6%. Now, there's two sides to that. First of all, the system is set up for a particular way of working. And so the nuances of how women work don't necessarily work in there. Now, I'm not saying all women or all men but there's, I talk about masculine and feminine energy rather than men and women. You know, there are some very strong, very strident women and there's some quite gentle men. But the system is set up to for just strident people who are very, as you said, very analytical and just go straight in. There's no personality around it. Right, right, right. But the other side of that is women do tend to be much more, I can do more with less. 
So they're not asking for money as often. And when they do, they don't ask for as much money as perhaps their male counterparts. It's a bit like looking at a job advert. Women go, I can do four out of six. I'm not going for that job unless I can do nine out of 10. Whereas men go, oh, I can do three out of 10. I'm going for that. Sweeping generalization, but it's a different way. So um, I, I am a Women's Enterprise Scotland ambassador. And part of my role is that when I hear women are struggling, I go, oh, I can help or I can point you in the right direction. Do not be silent in this. Do not feel like you are alone. So yeah, it, it definitely on the on, on the on the up. And I'm I'm I think it's amazing. I'm meeting so many amazing women now who are just going. What, what you know I, what? I'm what going I for it. Yes, is that women help women? Yes. You know there are a lot of women that are sitting on their duff that's got cash, a lot of cash yeah. money, and don't know what to do with it. You know, instead of, and, and I say this in a loving way, instead of doing micro loans or ch charities, invest right there in your own yeah. back door. Work Absolutely. with like Aileen that is, you know, she knows who needs it. She mm -hmm. works with them. She mentors them. Seek her out. This is a win for everybody. Not just yeah. Aileen, but the client, but also the person that's giving. Because mm -hmm. gratitude is everything. Yeah. And if you can give something and turn around and look and say, wow, I'm really proud of that. Look at the success that I've made. Look at the, you know, look at this, look at that. You mm -hmm. are just really mirroring a great role model. You talked about mantras. Mine are, how can I get any better than this? And what else mm -hmm. is possible? I ask yeah. myself that often and regularly. Like you said, you already have to see yourself. You have to see your success as almost as a snapshot of a memory yes that's a great way to put it because then when you do it you've already done it in your head so already it's a not as scary it. and you know you can do it you know i see you've done it this big beautiful wood desk with a board mm -hmm. of directors yeah a nice armchair well it's not the oak table that i want but it's coming the board of yeah. directors are all the people I admire on a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about I, Napoleon Hill, Think and Go ri Grow Rich is one of my, oh. my go-tos. I listen to it every yeah. year, and I don't care when I listen to it, there's always a nugget that yes. takes me to the next level, that makes me rethink. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And invest in yourself. Do audible. Create great habits. While you're doing paperwork, Listen to a great audio book. Yeah. In the car. I do it in the car when I'm traveling. It's in the car. And so sometimes I'll get in the car and the kids come in with me and they're like, what are we listening to? Right, <laughs> they're right. completely impressed. But I, I need that because I'm driving and I'm listening and it's going in. You know, and it's just, and I often find that when I go to my next meeting, like you say, I've heard something different. I'm going, actually, that's going to really help April when I speak to her. And it's just, else, and it's that is that those kids are going to think back five years from now. Wow, you know, mom used to listen to those weird business tapes, but it really yeah. made an impact. It really made a mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. My kids would tell me, you know what, mom, sometimes we don't implement what you say, but we listen to everything. So yeah. they are absorbing. What are you telling that 13 and 15 year old about the challenges of life and about being an independent contributor to society? And, being an entrepreneur or being a plumber, you know, what, what are you pouring into them? Because this is a critical age. It is. And um, I'm being teenagers, they, you know, their brains are wired to just think of self. So I'm really trying to get them to think beyond self. What, what, what legacy do they want to create? You know, what, did, what, le you know, legacy is a great word, you know, what legacy, how do they want people, how do people how do they want people to remember them? You know, um, I am also saying, you know, learn, never stop learning. Learning is a superpower. Um, you know, learn about yourself. Like you said, invest, learn about yourself. I'm, I'm 52 and I'm still learning about myself. You know, I'm still learning what my potential is. Learn about yourself. What is it that you want to do? What, what do you not want to do? You know, all that knowledge, you know, um, what is out there? You know, going to school is a real, real privilege. Not everybody gets to go to school. And so take advantage, ask the teachers, ask them what you can do. And if there's something that you want, figure it out and I will support you on that. So the other thing is trust your intuition. It's often your best guide. 
I, you know, um, my daughter, I'm telling you, she was a creative and mm-hmm. I was concerned. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what in the world is she going to do? And now she is a sought out makeup design, uh, makeup artist and costume designer for theater. And she is just as happy as she can be. Yeah. That's what I wanted. But you know what? You don't know. School is a privilege, but it's mm-hmm. school is expensive. Yeah. What yeah. about the trades? There's still very viable trades that people mm-hmm. can do. construction works, plumbers, electricians, the restaurant industry, the hotel industry. Well, you know, all they're that. creating, they're building people's homes. Exactly. I mean, what more precious is that than having you in your home? And then they're feeding people, they're looking after people. I like, I love to go out for food and I feel, I feel spoiled because somebody else has made this beautiful meal for me. It is a treat, you know, and I and I appreciate everything. I'm always nice to service people, you know, because they can get it hard. And you're right, the, the trades are they're they're an undervalued skill set. I can't I can't make a wardrobe, I can't rewire my house, I can't put in a new bathroom. I need people to be doing that. And chat AI can't do it either. No. <laughs> they exactly. Can do the analytical stuff, but the hands-on, the love, the care, yeah. the connection. They yeah. haven't mastered that. And I don't think they no. will. No. Let me ask you some fun questions about you. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is my favorite part. If you were an athlete. Ooh. Okay. What would you play? What would I play? Um, actually, I would be on the track. I'd be a track athlete. And I would do the pole vault. Because the idea of running with this pole and then just catapulting all the way up and over I just that feeling of flying must be amazing and then to come back down and just go I've achieved it that's what I would do well that's amazing if you were an appliance in the kitchen oh what appliance would you be do you know what I'd be the kettle because there is nothing that cannot be fixed without a cup of tea or a cup of coffee (laughs) that's sweet that is wonderful I always say I want to be the refrigerator because I just want to be the one that chills. <laughs> oh, nice. I like that. Cool and, and chills. If you were a flower in the garden, what flower would you be? I like a tulip. A tulip, a purple, deep, dark purple tulip. They are the most underrated flower, but oh my goodness, they they are gorgeous and they bring such style and class to, to anywhere. They're just... It doesn't have to be the big showy flowers, I think. Just, and, yeah. And you know, men love tulips. I'm just telling you. But what mm-hmm. I like is when they start to bloom, they just, they're wild. They just go wherever, yeah. wherever you know. They don't just have to go straight up. You know, they don't no. hang in a cluster. They have independence. They so do. That's, that's very good. That's very good. Mm-hmm. Your three magical wishes. Anything. It doesn't have to be philosophical. It doesn't have to save the world. It doesn't have to be about the kids. What would you spend those three wishes on? Um, I would love to be able to sing. Mm. Love to be able to sing. Um, I, I think I'm a, an unfulfilled performer. <laughs> okay. Frustrated performer. Um, so I because I'd actually love to just be on stage doing that because when I sing and I have taken singing lessons um when I sing my speaking voice is stronger and I'm more confident to get up and do big conferences mm. for me it just it permeates throughout my life so that's number one number two is I would have um I would have a house in my one of my favorite places which is up in the highlands of scotland as a bolt hole to go to um and i would offer it to all my friends to go to for when they and i would run um retreats for women entrepreneurs to just go and have an overnight and spend good money to be in fluffy dressing gowns and slippers (laughs) good 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 you got one more oh my third one would be um Hmm. Oh my goodness. What would my third one be? Oh, I'm trying to learn to play the Scottish harp just now. Wow. And I would just like to be I able to some pictures of you. Yeah. So I had the weekend there. It's the first time I'd been away for that learning weekend for since before COVID. It was amazing. 
Um, and I would just love to be able to play it as well as those uh, those ladies there that taught me. Um, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. And even when you hit the wrong note, it still sounds lovely. And it's a very tactile one because you're sitting, holding it in, in a hug as you play. So well, yeah, those are my things. I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you a copy of her CD. She is a jazz harpist. <gasps> and she has the, the harp, but she has one that straps onto her and she plays jazz. She has completely wow. turned that harp into the primary instrument, not an accompaniment. Yeah, yeah, amazing. It's it's amazing. And it's very mm -hmm. loving and it's very angelic. Yeah. You know, it's very sweet. So good luck with all of that. Big dreams, big aspirations, but nothing too big that you can't handle, um, that you can't encourage others. So I would love for you to leave your information with us. Uh, we're going to yep. put it also in the show notes in the back of the interview, if there's any current offer. Cool. But Brains, again, as I tell you, don't worry about her being in Scotland. I'm in San Diego. You can work with her anywhere. And then when you show your success, show your gratitude and send her a ticket ever come meet you <laughs> yes yes for those high-powered in-person sessions <laughs> exactly or again you know we don't want to be a dream crusher we're a dream catcher we may come and see you and you're holding a retreat there in scotland that's, that's it one yep one. i'm already working on something well let us know so we can get our little coin together yeah Please tell my brains how to get in contact with you aileen <laughs> So I am on LinkedIn. If you put in my name, Aileen Boyle, you will find me. Um, um, Aileen Boyle, CEO, you'll find me. Um, that's the best way. I, I have a Facebook um, page. That's how we met. Um, those are the two best things because I spend an awful lot of my time digitally because I am international, as you said, and, and, and that's where there's an awful lot of amazingly entrepreneurial uh, women um so that would be that would be the best way and again i can send the details so just reach out drop me an email i can even give you a link to my diary just you know book a half an hour slot and let's talk about business talk about business you've got to talk it through you have an idea yeah. and you know it's planting a seed but you've got to cultivate the soil you've got to water it you've got to feed it and it's it will fruit it will be fruit. trust me exactly it maybe it won't be one apple but then the next time it could be a complete orchard. So I am looking forward to all of that and seeing and watching your future success. Brains, I need you to go in, please like, love, share, and subscribe. Like, love, share, and subscribe to LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Blog Talk, iTunes, Mixcloud, Spotify. Okay, I'm going to have her play some heart music and we're going to sing them to you. <laughs> <laughs> but stay connected, stay close, because again, we provide you the best and the boldest here on the entire universe, right here on the edge. Thank you so much, Aileen. You are the queen. I have had the best time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brains, be good to yourself. I'm watching. <laughs>